thank you everybody for joining us for our weekly webinar workshop. My name is Brian McKay. Uh, I'm going to be today's host and I'm going to be accompanied by our uh, lead system engineer, Victor Verba. Uh, he's also a big uh, boutique gin aficionado and connoisseur. So if you have any gin questions, you can feel free to hit him up. Uh, any whiskey questions, uh, hit me up. Uh, <laughs> All right. I want to thank everybody for attending today. As usual, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to join us for these. Um, let's see. Today, we're going to be discussing all the different UCCX widgets available and verified to track both agent and queue statistics, both historically and in real time. Also, keep in mind that these webinars are always recorded and posted within 24 hours after they occur. So if you have to leave early and miss part of it, or you just want to be able to review it again at your own pace, uh, just check the webinars page on our website for all past and upcoming webinars. Uh, so let's do a quick overview of our company and what we do. Then we'll jump into the live demo where Vic's going to guide us through using the CCX widgets. Uh, we'll pause for a brief Q&A during the demo. If you have any questions, please make sure to ask them in the Q&A panel in the bottom right of the screen. And after the Q&A, we'll reward one lucky attendee chosen at random, a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around to see if you've won. All right, let's start with a quick overview of Verify. We are the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco Collaboration. Deployable either on-prem or as a hosted cloud solution, we provide industry-leading CDR reporting and call analytics, as well as customizable dashboards and widgets, UCCX reporting and widgets, remote phone control, change management, and we are happy to now offer Cisco Cube CDR reports and dashboards. If you have any questions on any of our other features, or if you have any interest in evaluating our Cube offering, please contact us at support at verify.com or simply reach out to your account manager. Uh, one more thing before we kick this off for, off, for an additional fee, Verify now offers a new service that provides managed consulting services to our customers. Verify's support engineer team engages with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to remotely provide additional consulting, report building, dashboard configuration, and system monitoring assistance. This is a service that provides you a dedicated Verify SE to do all the heavy lifting, giving you as stress-free, hands-off uh, an experience as possible. For more information, please contact us, and we'll be glad to speak more in depth about pricing and terms of service for our Ninja Enhanced Services. All right, with that, let's get into the live demo, get into the wild here. I'm going to hand things off to Vic, if I can find my participants <laughs> panel that it likes to always hide from me. All right, there we go. Let me make you presenter. Thank you, Brian, and hello, everybody, and thank you guys for joining us for this weekly workshop. Uh, as Brian had said, the main purpose of uh, today and what we're going to be covering are some of the UCCX widgets. So uh, essentially what we want to talk a little bit about, I'm not going to go is super in-depth on how to build different widgets and add certain criteria. We have plenty of webinars where we kind of cover a lot of building out certain types of widgets. But what we really want to do is kind of talk about what these widgets do look like? Which ones are these? In other words, you know, these guys over here, what do they do? How do I make those? As opposed to something down here where I'm looking at some trending over a day or week or an hour, or I'm looking at real-time statistics. Each one of these is a different widget type, um, as well as our broadcast banner that you'll notice up here at the top. So uh, we're going to talk about what those widgets are, uh, and maybe why some of the best use cases are those. So let's go ahead and get started. So to, to kick things off, we're going to go ahead and just create a very simple new dashboard here. Uh, we'll just call this guy testing, and I'm going to save that. And that's going to bring us over. Oh, testing's already in use. We'll call it Victor testing, if I could spell my name right here. And let's go ahead, and this is going to bring us off to a blank slate. Uh, so let's take a look at these widgets and break down each of the individual widget types. Up at the top right, I'm going to click New Widget, and I'm going to pop down to my UCCX. And you'll notice we have several different types of widgets, so the purpose of today's session is to cover what each one of these are. Um, before I get started in UCCX, let's first take a look at our broadcast banner. Um, if you notice, that was the banner I had scrolling across the top of my screen, and that is under Application. That is not specifically for UCCX or CDR or Cube. It is an application-based widget. So this is just an announcement widget, and if I click Next, you're going to see a couple different options. Um, first, I can give it a title. I will just call this my banner. And the next thing we do is we decide whether we want this to be a widget 
um, or an application-wide widget. So the difference here is if it is a widget, it is specifically for my screen or this particular dashboard. If it is an application-based widget, then that means it will affect all of my dashboards where I have an application-type banner. So in other words, perfect example is let's say I wanted to have, I have multiple dashboards for multiple uh, teams. Um, and on that, on those dashboards, I have an application-based widget. Well, I could go to one dashboard, update one widget, um, and it will update the banners across all of my dashboards. Um, as opposed to a widget, which is singular, it is just for this particular dashboard. Just to kind of really give you a quick example, uh, I'm going to pop back over to this guy over here, and we're going to edit my existing widget here. So my broadcast banner right now is a widget-type platform, which means it is specifically just for this dashboard. It does not span dashboards. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to an application-based dashboard or an application-based widget, and then you're going to notice as soon as I try to add it to another dashboard, it's already going to have my pre-canned text in it. So right now it is a widget. It is strictly only for this dashboard. But if I change this to an application, and we'll say, you know, hello world. Anybody should know that. Uh, and now it is an application-based dashboard. Once I save it, it's great. It's going to go ahead and update. Now it says hello world. So next thing we're going to do is just pop over to my testing dashboard here. Whoops. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new widget. And once I choose application here, an announcement, um, once I go ahead and change this to an application, now you'll notice that it will say, hello world. We'll say, you know, hello world widget. And I save this guy. And it's just going to go ahead and pop up. It'll go ahead and take on the configurations I have here. But the text values are the same as I had on my other widget. So if I edit this guy down, and let's change this to Hello, Brian. And I'm going to go ahead. We'll scroll this guy slow here and save. So now what you're going to notice is it's going to say, hello, Brian, here. But if I change back to my simple dashboard where I had that widget, it's also going to say, hello, Brian, here. So the idea behind a application-based widget is that it will span across all of your dashboards, making it very easy to change one message across all of your dashboards. Or you can go ahead and create a simple widget that is just for that dashboard and a banner just for that dashboard. So that's the purpose of the broadcast banner. Um, you'll notice there we are. Hello, Brian. Um, is now going to broadcast across all my dashboards. Hello, by the way. Didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> All right, so uh, that kind of clears up hopefully some of the banner um, and, and the purpose of the banner uh, 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 widgets here. Uh, let's go ahead and continue going and dig into some of our UCCX-based widgets here. So the first one we're going to go ahead and take a look at is going to be the agent statistics detail. And I'm going to choose agent stats detail. I'm going to click next. Now, this is an agent detail widget, okay? A little bit different than a real-time agent widget. The idea behind an agent detail is that it's looking a little bit more historically at detail detail information. You're going to notice I have some time frames here. I can look at current day, current week, current hour, things like that. So when you're building an agent detail, think more historically than what's going on in my, with my agents right now. And you'll notice through some of the statistics here, that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and present. We're going to present some additional options here that are a little bit more looking historically to get counts. You know, what did my agents do today? What did my agents do this week? Not what are my agents doing right at this moment in time? So we're going to go ahead and say agent detail. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick a couple stats. We'll go ahead and look at the current day's information, or maybe we'll look at the current week information. We'll blow it up a little bit. So you'll notice that we have a lot of different values over here. Again, the idea behind agent details, this is a little bit more historical. So can I add current state in there? I certainly can, but am I going to rely on this to understand the current state? Probably not, because this is not real-time agent information. You'll notice that we have a refresh rate here. Right now, it's 15 minutes. So if this is refreshing every 15 minutes, I'm probably not getting the state that they're in. I'm getting the state that they were in maybe five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. So bearing in mind that, the, again, this idea, the agent detail is not real-time. It is looking a little bit more historical. Doesn't hurt to have agent state in here. Just got to understand that this is not right now. All right, so a couple things that we'll probably want to add here when we're starting to talk about a little bit more historical things like total calls, because now we're going to look at the total volume of calls over a, a particular period. Um, maybe I'm going to look at, let's see, 
inbound. So let's get our inbound count. This is an inbound call center. Uh, maybe I want to look at a couple other things like uh, I love being able to add not ready information, the average amount of time people are in a not ready state. Um, I am a big fan of the agent count. Um, a lot of times this is a great way to recognize if an agent's phone is not working, they'll go, uh, you know, not ready on and off, on and off. And it may be really quick. If they're having a problem with their phone, it, you know, it may make them not ready and then they'll go ready again and then not ready and ready again. So just looking at that counts a great way to just kind of get some general information. And there's a lot you can add in here. Again, purpose of this workshop here is not really to go into the details of creating the widgets. It's just to identify really what these widgets are used for. So I'm just adding a couple stats in here that are going to monitor the agents from a historical perspective. In other words, the current week, it's going to refresh every 15 minutes. And then from a search set perspective, um, in this particular widget, because this is historical, I kind of want agents in any state. In other words, I'm not looking at right now. I'm looking at what's been going on for the current week. So if I tried to filter a state, so let's say logged in, I'm looking at people that are logged in right now. Well, that doesn't help me if they were logged in yesterday and I still want to see their stats. So for an agent detail, I prefer to keep all agents on. Um, and then I'm just going to filter down to a couple particular agents so we can see some stats here. So uh, as, as if you're familiar with our webinars, uh, we're going to go ahead and pick on our usual suspects. Bruce Wayne is always trouble. Uh, Charlie Murphy over here is never answering his phone. And Kenny McCormick over here, uh, he could be trouble sometimes. So I'm just adding some general widgets in here that we're going to go ahead and see. And we'll call this agents. Charlie must be busy with Rick James again. <laughs> exactly. Yes, he is. Uh, so this is much more of a statistical widget um, where uh, you're going to see kind of a breakdown of my agents as well as the stats that I chose. Um, you'll notice that we have the color codes for who's ready, who's not ready. Um, if it's not colored, that means that they're not logged in, which is one of the reasons for an agent detail widget. Um, again, looking a little bit more historically, how did they do throughout the week, not what they're doing right now. We will still go ahead and keep their status once the widget refreshes but this is an idea of an agent detail widget just kind of breaking down the agents and what they've done for the current day week or month or anything like that all right um, next widget I'm going to go ahead and add here is going to be our go do our CCX analytics and we're going to take a look at the CSQ detail widget now again much like the uh, agent detail the CSQ detail is also built for historical information. You'll notice that we've got a refresh rate. We can go down to every 30 seconds. So we're not looking at that real-time information here. We're looking to see how these cues have done from a historical perspective, be it the entire current day, uh, the hour, the week, and we'll pick on week in this case. And I'll just call this a CSQ detail widget. Um, now we're going to pick our cues, and I'm going to go ahead and pick some of our, our usual suspects here. I'll pick our cars queue, you know, our phone room, our help desk. Let me get that guy opened up. And I'll just throw those guys in there for right now. Next thing we're going to look at is our stats. Again, keeping in mind the idea behind this widget is to see how this queue has been performing. So I'm going to pick just some, you know, very general uh, counts here. So we'll add, you know, things like the total call count, how many calls are going into that queue. Um, we'll go ahead and add some queue time in here, uh, average queue time, you know, the average amount of queue time they, you know, a caller spends in the queue throughout the week. Um, uh, I always like to add uh, abandoned average queue time in there. Um, you always want your average queue time to be uh, uh, higher uh, than your abandoned average queue time because uh, you don't want people hanging up on average uh, longer than they're willing to wait to abandon. Uh, and we'll add, you know, things like DQ count in here and just, you know, some general stats to just kind of get us going here. And let's see, uh, average ring time, we'll got that guy in there. And now you'll notice we have calls waiting in here. But again, much like that agent detail, this guy here is not built around real time. It's not giving you that, that super quick refresh rate. Um, you could go down to 30 seconds. It's just going to get you pretty close. Um, but we're looking at historical information. So I don't even like to add calls waiting for this detail uh, type widget because it's not what it's for. It's for seeing how the performance of the queue was over time, not necessarily what that queue is doing right at this moment. We've got another widget for that. So I added a few different things in here. Um, you'll notice we have search sets. Uh, this is relatively new for uh, version 12.4. So if you don't have search sets in your widget, make sure that you guys upgrade. We got a great webinar out there on how to use search sets and why to use those. Um, next thing we've got down here are some thresholds. 
Thresholds are a great way to be able to draw attention to something that's been happening uh, within your queue. So I can go ahead and set, you know, maybe if the average queue time or the, uh, did I add, uh, abandon average queue time for all of my queues goes between or higher than a certain value, I want this to turn red. So again, keeping in mind, I'm looking at the current week. So if this is cumulative through the week, so I'm going to make sure that I set my thresholds to, to understand that, you know, throughout the week, I want my average queue time to be X. If it goes over X, I want this to go ahead and turn a certain color. And I'll just say greater than or equal to, I don't know, zero, 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 one. Zero, zero. So greater than a minute. So I'm just going to have that turn red. So uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, make sure you guys take a look at our webinars page because we've got some web great webinars coming up in March uh, regarding some of the new things that are going to be released in our, our uh, version uh, 13. Um, and uh, one of the things that from a threshold perspective um, is we're going to be getting ready to release some audible alerts. Um, so keep an eye out for that webinar and 13. So uh, what we're looking at here is a CSQ detail widget. Again, not real time, um, but looking at the things from a much more historical perspective. I'm looking at the current week's information. So how many calls did we take this week? Um, what was the average queue time this week? What was the average abandoned queue time for this week? Um, those are always great values. And, and when I say I was like average queue time and abandoned average queue time, these are always red flags right here. So if I'm looking at my abandoned average queue time and it is less than the amount of time people stay in my queue on average, that's a problem because I know people are willing to abandon uh, in a shorter amount of time than it takes us to answer that call. So a uh, great little thing to have in there. But again, idea behind CSQ detail is showing you historic detail on how those queues are performing. All right. So uh, going ahead and just kind of going down the row here, next thing we're going to do is, again, uh, we're going to do a CSQ summary. I like this widget. This is probably one of my favorite widgets here just because I like the structure of it. Um, so CSQ summary is a blockier type widget. You'll see these in, in, in my dashboard, and you saw a few of these in my dashboard when we first started. Um, CSQ summary. This one, whoops, if I could spell. This one here is a cumulative. So it is total summary amongst all my queues. So actually, let me close out of this guy. So you'll see this down here. This is total summary of all my queues. So I'm giving you a nice summary row of all the queues that I have. That's kind of what the CSQ summary widget does, but it gives you the ability to do that in a little bit blockier fashion. Um, so this is probably one of my favorite widgets and one of my go-tos, just because I like the style of it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add this. We'll call it CSQ Summary. And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of queues. We'll add that same Cars queue, uh, Online Help Desk, Phone Room, and uh, we'll, we'll, IT, IT Help Desk. Um, or you know what? Let's trim this down a little bit. Let's just go ahead and do our Help Desk. So now what we're looking at is a cumulative summary across both of our Help Desk queues. It doesn't have to be two queues. I could just pick on one of these and get, this, and get stats for just that one. I'm looking at this from a current day, current hour, current week. So again, this is not a real time. This is not something that, hey, this is what's going on right now. Um, but it is, you know, if you went down to current hour, you're going to get great stats of how you've been performing for an hour. I'm going to keep this guy at the current week. Now, the way that I like to use this is I like to kind of create multiple of these. So I like to look at these and bring attention to them because of the blocky fashion. So one of the things that I focused on was that average queue time. So let's say I add average queue time. And like I said, my favorite thing next to average queue time is abandoned average queue time. I think these are two stats that fit very well together. Um, so I'm going to add both of those guys. Remember, I'm looking at my entire help desk team for right now. It's two different queues. So I'm going to get the average queue time for both of those and the abandoned average queue time for both of those summarized together. Uh, we have search sets. And then, again, of course, we still have our thresholds. So let me save this guy here. And now what we have is a little bit something that's a little bit more of that blocky style fashion. So this is something that I always like here is I like that, that, that kind of block style because you can really intermingle different things uh, around it. Um, right now it's called CSQ Summary. I can change the name, CSQ Help Desk Summary. So now I'm monitoring both of my queues, and I know I have my CSQ Help Desk Summary right there. So now I've got kind of that blocky, and I can add some of those uh, statistics. I like this. I want to get more stats. It's very easy. I can just copy this guy. He's going to pop up over here. And if I edit him down, now I can just take him and add some different stats in here. So, you know, maybe uh, I'll have my average queue time, abandoned average queue time. I already have a little widget with those. So now maybe I want to get my total count. Whoops. 
and my maybe my abandoned count or even, maybe even my abandoned percent. Again, now I'm looking kind of at abandoned percent. I could set thresholds on these abandoned set or percents where if it's hitting a certain threshold and I'm looking at the current week, I can easily change these to current day, um, current hour, and kind of get those statistics constantly updating and, and change those color flags. So we're at about 19%, so I can easily edit that guy down and say, you know what, let's look at the current hour. And let's see what kind of information we have there. Or I could just copy this widget, and I have one for the current hour and one for the current week. I knew there was a reason I didn't use current hour. Uh, so we'll go back and change that to, let's see about current day. Let's see if this queue's got any activity today. Four calls, 0% abandoned. That's great. That's what I want to see. But I really like this kind of blocky approach to being able to see this information. And you can create these for different uh, uh, different support queues, create them for multiple queues. I see a lot of people that'll have just one with total count, abandoned count, and they'll have you know multiple queues set up going across their dashboard that are constantly refreshing and just giving them up-to-date information as to what's going on for the day. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and scroll down to our next widget here, and that's going to be the CSQ time period widget. So this is a great widget to be able to have, and this is kind of that trending information that we were looking at. As you saw, kind of my line graph waving through the, uh, uh, through, through the, the dashboard there. So we'll go ahead and give this guy a name. We'll call it CSQ time period. And you'll hear this referred to a lot as period over period type analytics and things like that. Um, again, we're not looking at that real-time information, but we're getting pretty close with that 30-second refresh rate. Now, this particular widget here can be broken down by day of week, quarter, hour, hour, date, maybe if you wanted to see what's going on throughout the month, um, or day of week. I'm going to pick on day of week just so we can kind of see how we're going uh, throughout the day of week. And then we're just going to make a copy of that, and we'll take a look at it through hour of day. Um, got some flexibility, bar graph or line graph. Depends on your queue, how busy they are, how their hours separate, whether you want a bar graph or a line graph. Um, I kind of like the flow of the line graph if I'm looking throughout the day of the week. Um, this particular widget here is based on a single queue. So we're going to go ahead and pick our, uh, we'll pick our online help desk here. Now, you're going to notice that we can do a count, a percent, or a time. I cannot mix count and percent or count and time in the same uh, flow or same widget. Reason being is once I start looking at this for, say, a week, I could have you know 500 hours but only have like 100 calls. And that's really going to throw off the, uh, the balance between bars as well as lines. So these are broken down to the different statistic types. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and run it. It'll refresh every 15 minutes. It's going to look at day of week for my online help desk and give me a count of, we're just going to do something simple. We'll do total calls, ring no answers, my new favorite disposition, um, aborted calls, handled calls, and we'll do abandoned calls in there. So I'm going to rearrange these, total count, handled count, abandoned count, ring no answer, and aborted. Um, so now that we've got that configured, we pick our time period. So what time period do we want? Current day? Well, I want to break this down by day of week. So just doing today doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm going to break this guy down, and we're going to do the, we'll do the current week. And, of course, search sets in there as well. You have that option to search out particular events. So let's take a look at this guy here. And there he is. So now what we're looking at is our day of week breakdown, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, broken down in a line graph. Um, this is the CSQ time period widget. Um, this is a great widget to get a lot of different statistics. Um, so I can go ahead and make a copy of this guy, and we'll just go ahead and break it down a little bit different. So I want to see my busiest day of the week. Um, well, I've just created that widget, but maybe I also want to see what is my busiest hour of the day. Um, so now I've got that. All I did was copy this widget, change my time period to hour a day, and now I've got a nice uh, widget that's incrementing the hour of the day for the current week, and I can see clearly 10 o'clock is my busiest day for this particular queue. I can also see how many calls we handled, and then how many went abandoned, and how many were just a ring no answer. So nice option here to be able to break those down. That same type of thing. Maybe I want to see that as a bar graph because I like bar graphs better. No problem. You just go in there, switch it. But this is kind of that CSQ time period widget that's going to give you that breakdown over a period of time. I like to create a lot of these for trending as well. So instead of just looking at the current week or the previous week, 
if I edit this guy down. It's a great trending widget. If you're making changes within your call center or something like that, you want to be able to see if those changes are taking effect. Um, be it, you know, maybe you added resources or you just changed some flow within your contact center. Um, you can easily go ahead and break that down instead of hour a day. I want to see month over month. And my time period, I'm going to go ahead and break it down maybe the current and previous two months. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that month over month breakdown. So on a single dashboard, I've got day over day, so I know the busiest days of the week. I got hour over hour, so I know the busiest hours. Um, and now I've got uh, a time period for the previous basically two months and current month that's going to let me know how I've been trending um, per day, per hour, uh, as well as per month. So great widgets to go ahead and create, um, but those are the CSQ time widget, uh, time period widgets. So when you're looking for that kind of graphical representation, um, those are the CSQ time period widgets. And you can see I'm looking over the previous couple months, so it takes a little bit to come in. Um, but there you go. Now you got a great widget that's giving you some trending information over the month, day, as well as hour. So next widget we're going to go ahead and hit here and I know we are running close to the clock, is going to be the uh, real-time agent activity. Um, if you're running CCX and you're using Verify, this is a must-have. Um, this widget is pretty straightforward. This guy is looking real-time. So we looked at the real-time, uh, or we looked at the agent detail, um, and you notice you had a lot more columns to be able to pick from. Um, there were a lot of different statistics because we're looking historically. Now, this is real time. So this is what's going on right at this moment in time. So I'm going to go ahead and pick current reason, current state with duration, and dialogues. Dialogues are like if there's a phone number they're talking to, we'll show you the phone number. Those are the most common ones that we see, but you could also see things like previous states. Uh, but again, you'll notice you're not getting a lot of total counts in here. You're not getting that historical information because this is not a historical widget. This is what is my queue or what are my agents doing right at this moment in time. Um, you can go ahead and add activity tables, the chart, and the legend. Um, and then from a search set perspective, I do not like to show agents in all states. This is real time. I want to know what my agents are doing right now that are logged in. So I can go ahead and just choose logged in, and there we go. Now we've got a real-time agent widget that's going to be monitoring all my agents that are logged in and show me their current states. Where did that guy go? Oh, and of course, I've got no detail available. Let me go ahead and edit this guy down. Let's see, what did I, what did I screw up here? Real-time, verify. Ah, I picked the wrong cluster. I see what I did. Let me recreate that so you guys can see what that guy looks like here. Oops, I picked the real-time cluster. And we'll pick those same things here. I'm just going to pick on these three guys and just look at those logged in agents. And very quickly, we've got a real-time uh, widget that's showing my agent that is logged in, how long they've been logged in. You'll notice the ticker. If he goes not ready, it's instantly going to change to not ready right here. Um, so great widget to have and also a great widget to be able to break different things out or add different things. So let's say, for example, I want the summary chart and the legend. You can go ahead and add those. Now you're going to get kind of the little summary chart here as well as a legend of how many folks you've got logged in and what their current states are. All right. And I know I've got about two minutes left here. So last but not least, let's go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to look at the real-time CSQ statistics. Um, this guy right here is going to be looking at CSQs in a much more quicker refresh rate fashion. So RT CSQ. Now, unlike the detail widget, you notice we've got a five second refresh rate here. So this guy is constantly going out and querying those cues to be able to see all of the stats that you're looking at. And just in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and add all our cues in here so we can kind of see that. Um, and you'll notice that you've got less statistics. Again, we're not really looking to be able to get how long all the information was from a current week perspective. We want to see what's going on right now. So yes, you have total calls in here, but what are we looking for here? I want to know how many calls are currently waiting. I want to know what the, the longest wait time is. In other words, who's still in the call in the queue and how long have they been in that queue? Um, and maybe you want some things like you know how many agents are currently logged in. Um, or maybe how many agents are talking and things like that. So you can go ahead and add those. And of course, you could always add thresholds onto these as well to draw attention to, well, you know what? If I don't have any agents logged into the queue, I want this to turn red because that's a problem. So you can go ahead and add those thresholds. And just to give you an idea of what you're looking at here, this will look very similar to the CSQ detail, 
but one of the things you're going to do is this is a much quicker refresh rate um, and it's limited it's looking more what's going on right now how many calls do i have in my queue right at this moment in time what's my oldest call if they're in the queue right now how long have they been in that queue do i have any queues right now that have zero agents logged in that's the idea behind the real-time csq is really just giving you that information as to what's going on in those queues right at this moment in time so with that, guys, I'm glad we were able to kind of get through all of those in, in one session here, and I hope I was able to shed a little bit of light on what some of these individual widgets do. Uh, Brian, I'm going to kick it back to you. Do we have any questions on any of these guys? Uh, we do not have any questions just yet, uh, but if you have any, please type them in the Q&A panel now, and we will uh, address those as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm going to try and go back to... Yep, let me go ahead and stop sharing here. Oh, that's that's why it's not letting me do it. No, it's still not letting me do it. Maybe I have to make myself. I think maybe you got to take the ball back. Yeah, I got to yeah. take the ball back. Yep, yep, good old Webex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let me go back to my screen one. Perfect. There we go. You guys should be seeing that now. Coming up now, and there we go. All right, so let me go back. Got to do the WebEx shuffle again. Let me see if there's any anything in the Q&A panel. No, nothing yet. Uh, that's okay, though. Um, just a reminder that uh, we do post these uh, once we've had a chance to you know, finish recording and editing them for time. Uh, so you can always come back and, and view it again and refer back to it. We also have a knowledge base on our website uh, that may answer a lot of your questions. Or you can always just uh, email us at support at verify.com. That's going to automatically log a ticket in our system and notify the whole team. And we will uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, so let's get to the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, the winner of today's $50 Amazon gift card, or as I call it, two new movie rentals or 10 old movie rentals. Uh, and the winner is, congratulations. Uh, your account manager will be reaching out to you this week uh, with your gift card. Uh, thanks again for attending, everybody else. Uh, tune in next week for another chance to win. And uh, speaking of next week, our next uh, webinar workshop is going to be the top widgets and reports that every CCX supervisor should be using. We're going to keep that CCX train rolling. Uh, that's going to be next week, same day and time. Uh, Dre Divas is going to be the host, and Mike Stratton is going to be the panelist presenting the technical data. Uh, so please join us then. And uh, just a reminder that we will be closed for the holiday on Monday. Uh, so if you are closed as well, if your company partakes in that, then happy uh, three-day weekend. Thanks again, everybody, and uh, appreciate you coming, and we'll see you next time.